It's homework time. Yes, homework time is here yet again. Let's start out in the customary manner. Let us do righteous deeds by placing our name at the top of the paper so when you turn in your work, you get credit. Hey, don't write my name. I'm writing my name. You write your name. All right. And let's put today's date. All right, today you write the actual date where and when you are in this wonderful world of ours. Decimal fraction review. I know you're like, what? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, we're going to plot and label each point on the number line below and complete the chart. Only, it says, only solve the portion above the dotted line. See, there's the dotted line. So we're not going to do the portion below. Okay, we are. All right, but shh, don't tell me. Okay. All right, so let's look. Let's do the chart first, okay, and then go back and plot these. I think it'll be easier that way. So uniform is two ones and nine tenths. To write that as a decimal, you simply put a two in the ones place. These are like directions. It's like a map. Put a two in the ones place. Decimal point. Put a nine in the tenths place. Boom. Two and nine tenths. Two ones and nine tenths. Done. And watch. When you say that, it tells you how to write it as a mixed number. Two and nine tenths. Two and a nine in the tenths place. Two and nine tenths. Two and nine tenths. Two and nine tenths. Oh, I love it. How much more to get to the next whole number? Well, we have two cakes and nine out of the ten pieces of the third cake. So to get to that total third cake, we just need one more piece, right? One more tenth, and then we'd have two and ten tenths. I hope this is all ringing some major bells in your head. Yes. So we just need one tenth more, and we'll write it as a fraction. Um, oh, oh, actually, we'll do both because it says one tenth or, we'll write it as a decimal as well, one tenth. Read it the same way. Remember that? Now here we're given it in both decimal and mixed number form. So four and four tenths is how you read that as a number. We could say 4.4 is how you write it, but four and four tenths. Four and four tenths is four in the what place? Four in the ones place. And what do we have in the tenths place? Four tenths, four ones and four tenths. And now look at this. We have four out of the 10 pieces. How many do we need? How many more slices of cake do we need to get to the next whole cake? Another six pieces, right? Would give us that 10 tenths. So it's six out of the 10 pieces are missing. I bet somebody ate them. Or we'd write that as six tenths as a decimal. Now here, look at that. Two tenths, all they give us here is two tenths or two tenths. They are not telling us what the actual number is. Okay, so all we can assume here is that really we could have any number and how many tenths. Well, if we need two tenths more to get to the next whole number, that means we're at how many tenths? We're at eight tenths. Okay, so whatever we're writing, we're at eight tenths. And there's no indication of what we should have here for the whole number, so I'm just going to use 8 tenths. Um, so I'll write that as a decimal, 8 tenths. I'll write that, now it's not a mixed number technically, but I'll write it as a fraction, as 8 tenths. And you see how that goes with the, the 2 tenths? Make that 0 look like a 0. Yeah! Um, it goes 8 tenths and 2 tenths will get us to the next whole number, which in this case would be 1. And just here, all I'd write is 8 tenths. Now we could have done one and eight tenths or two and eight tenths or three and eight tenths or four and eight tenths and stayed within the boundaries of this number line. Okay, so now I think we're better suited to plot these points. We see point A is two and nine tenths. They oh so kindly already did that for us. Now four and four tenths. So here's four and one, two, three, four tenths. Yeah, and that is point B, right? Point C, we put at 8 tenths, and so we can work that backwards, right? We can go back to 2 tenths, 1, 2 from 1, and say, okay, well, there's 8 tenths, and that's point C. And that's it. Let's do what we've been told not to do and look below the dotted line. Hmm. Ah, okay, so all that we're really doing here um, is we're going to create our own problem for B and plot that point. 
A is already done up above, but I'll take two seconds here and do it with you. Two ones and nine tenths to write that in decimal form is two in the ones place, right? We just did this, and nine in the tenths place. As a mixed number, we'll read it. Two and nine tenths. That's exactly what you write as a mixed number. Two and nine tenths. I'm kind of speeding through this because this is like oh so just review. How much more to get to the next whole number? Well, we have nine out of the ten pieces. One more would get us there. So it's one out of the ten pieces would give us ten tenths, the whole cake, right? At, or we can write that in decimal form as 0 0.1, also read as one tenth. And now we can come up with, and it, they already plotted the point for us up there, so that's all set. Um, so now for B, we can come up with our own number. Anything between 0 and 5. Ooh, how exciting. Um, let's do 5,800. No, it has to be between 0 and 5. Okay, let's do, uh, I don't know, let's do 1.5. How's that? 1 and 5 tenths. So I'm going to write it in decimal form first. And I'm going to plot it. So it'll be 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tenths. There we go. And that's point B. And just the way I say it is how I'd write it as a mixed number as well. 1 and 5 tenths, 1 and 5 tenths. Funky 5 there. Whoa. How much more to get to the next whole number? Well, I have 5 out of the 10 pieces. What do I need to have all 10? Yeah, another 5. So 5 tenths, or I could write that in decimal form as 0 0.5, also read as 5 tenths. And then unit form, well, what do I have in the ones place? I have one one, and what do I have in the tenths place? Five. One one and five tenths. Looky, 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 looky that. Oh yeah, I think there's a number two here somewhere. Has anyone seen number two? Hello? Hello? Help! Never mind. Woo, number two, here we are. We're gonna complete the chart. Yeah, we're just like randomly reviewing one thing, this whole decimal fraction concurrence. The uh, first one has been done for you. Thank you. Uh, only solve the top portion above the dotted line. I think we'll do as we did before and venture below the dotted line again. <laughs> All right, so look, we're given three and two tenths. Mix number, three and two tenths. Tenths. Well, look, if we read it just as a number, ignore the decimal point for a moment, 32, what place are we in? Tenths. You see how it's 32 tenths? Now, how many hundredths is that? Here, I'll write the number here out to hundredths. Read it now just as a number and then say what place we're in. 320 hundredths is the place we're in. You see, look, 32, where are we? Tenths, 32 tenths. 320, where are we? Hundredths, 320 hundredths. So now we can do the, these three whithies. Eight and six Tenths is how we'd read this number as a math number, right? Not 8.6, that's how we write it. And we do say it that way at times. But so eight and six tenths. So when I write it as a mixed number, I write eight and, go into the fraction, six tenths. No problem, all right. So now read it as a number and then say tenths. 86, where are we? Tenths. 86 tenths. I don't, I was writing the word or already, 86 tenths, or, now look, to write that as a fraction, I just write 86 tenths. Yeah, that's right, 86 tenths. And now here, I'll do the same thing I did before and write it like this so we can see what we're doing. Read it just as a number without the decimal point and then say what place we're in. 860 hundredths. So it is 860, where are we? Hundredths. And again, this is all review, so I'm not like going crazy with the explanations here. Um, so, or as a fraction, 860 hundredths. We just write 860 hundredths, right? Beautiful. And just to make the quick connection with money, 860 hundredths would be 860 pennies, which indeed would be $8.60. Isn't that cool? All right, so 11 and 7 tenths. There's a mixed number, I write exactly that. 11 and 7 tenths. Now, read it as a number and then say what place we're in. 117, where are we? Tenths. 117 
tenths. And to write it then as a fraction, as an improper fraction, we simply write 117 tenths. 117 what? Tenths. Say what? And now over here, we'll just take it out to the hundredths place so we can see. Read it just as a number, ignoring the decimal point for a moment, and then say what place we're in. 1,170 hundredths is where we are. 1,170, where are we? Hundredths. Or we could write that as an improper fraction as exactly that, 1,170 hundredths. 1,170 hundredths. And then they actually give us one that's slightly easier for the finish out here, four and eight tenths. Okay, so that's four and eight tenths. Yeah, we just write exactly that. And now how many tenths is that? Read it as a number, then say the place we're in. 48 tenths. 48, where are we? Tenths. Now to write that as an improper fraction, or we just write 48 tenths. 48 tenths is 48 tenths is 48 tenths is 48 tenths. Now if we write it out, the 4.8, take it out to the hundredths place, read it as a number, then say what place we're in. 480 hundredths. 480 hundredths. And then to write that as a fraction, as an improper fraction, or we just write 480 hundredths. 480 hundredths. Beautiful. And now we'll be naughty one last time and take a look below the dotted line. Pay no attention to the man behind the dotted line. Well, our instructions are to complete the chart and create our own problem in the last row. We just did moments ago, these first three, so I'm not going to do them again. However, we will go ahead and create our own problem in the last row. We can come up with any number we want. Hey, how about we do, I don't know, how about five, six, seven? Let's do 56 and 7 tenths. And I'm just giving you a sample. You come up with your own number. 56 and 7 in the tenths place. 56 and 7 tenths is exactly how I'd write the mixed number. 56 and 7 tenths. To write this now as a number of tenths, I just read it like a number and then say what place I'm in. 567, where am I? Tenths. 567 tenths. And to write that then, or as an improper fraction, I write exactly that, 567 tenths. 567 tenths. All right, now I'm going to write it out to the hundredths place so I can see it as hundredths. Read it as a number, then say what place we're in. 5,670 hundredths. 5,670 hundredths. And if you had that many pennies, 5,670 pennies, you would have $56.70. Isn't that amazing? And to write that then as an improper fraction, 5,670 hundredths, I would write, yes, the exact same thing, 5,670 hundredths. And if I seem giddy with delight, it's because this, my dearest friends, although there is a lesson 18 of sorts, Kind of, not really. There is no homework for it. So that's it. Homework time is not just complete for today, tonight. Homework time is complete for fourth grade. Eureka math forever. Woo! So I'll see you again next time. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. In any case, I've enjoyed sharing the year with you. I wish you all the best in mathematics and life. Remember, you are a good person at heart who can accomplish wonderful things. And even if you don't, you're still an incredible human being just because you are you, you are alive, you're perfect the way you are. I love you. You're wonderful. Mwah! Check you later.